Kids, Melissa Anderson from Character Kids Ministry here at Second Baptist Church here in Punkett City, Oklahoma. Last week we talked about how Jesus was able to feed around 20,000 people with only five barley loaves and two fish. This week we're going to talk about why we celebrate Easter, kind of the story before Easter happens, or as we like to call it here at Second Baptist Church, Resurrection Sunday. I know that no one is supposed to be going shopping right now or around other people, but if you've been to the stores, you normally see stuff to buy around this time, like Easter baskets, eggs, candy, books, even bunnies. The story we're going to have takes place a long time ago, before Easter holiday, but is the reason of Resurrection Sunday actually happened. Hopefully, over the next two weeks, we'll be able to make sure that you understand the real reason we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, not just Easter holiday. And the meaning behind that will be more special to you in ways that only um, God can make happen. We've been talking about some amazing things Jesus did in his lifetime, and we'll continue to do that after the next two weeks. But there's something I wanna stick in between here that's very important this time of year, and I'm gonna take advantage of the holiday season and what's going on so that you can see the most important part of Jesus' life. There are so many people, as much as Jesus did good things, there was a lot of people who hated him, who didn't want him to do good things, who didn't want him to raise the dead, didn't want him to tell women everything they'd ever done so they could come to know Jesus as their savior. They didn't want him feeding thousands. They hated him. And the Bible says the Pharisees hated him so much they plotted against him to have him killed. We're going to start our story here in the Bible. In John 18, 12, the Pharisees went to the garden where Jesus was praying to have him arrested. And our story begins in John 18, um, verse tw chapter 18, verse 12. It says, The band and the captain of the officers of the Jews took Jesus, bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law unto Caiaphas, which was the high priest the same year. This would be the um, scribes, Pharisees, the high priests, these are all the people who did not want Jesus around. They didn't agree with his teaching, they didn't believe that he was doing the right thing, and they didn't believe that God uh, had sent him here on earth to forgive us of our sins. It says that Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and they went with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. The high priest then asked Jesus and his disciples of his doctrine, and Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, and I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. He was saying, why are you asking me what I taught? Why don't you ask everyone around what I was telling them? They would make a good witness. When he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer us, thou the high priest, so. And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Jesus was saying, You hit me for no cause. I haven't been disrespectful. I haven't been angry with you. I haven't raised my voice. Why are you acting this way? Why, why, why are you being this way to me when I have been nothing but kind to you and only spoke the truth? It said then that Jan, um, now Anaphas had sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And then, when then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. It was around the time of their Passover, and if they went to the judgment hall, the high priest and the Pharisees could not participate in the Passover, and that wouldn't have worked out well for them. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? And they answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. They were saying, If he had not done something wrong, we wouldn't have brought him to you. And Pilate was going, I'm not seeing anything wrong with this man. I'm not seeing anything that you've accused him of that he's done. To me, he looks innocent. And the Pharisees were going, well, if he was innocent, we, why, why would we bring you an innocent man? And then Pilate said unto them, 
Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto Pilate, It is not lawful for us to put a man to death. Pilate was going, He is an innocent man. You take and do with him what he want. And the Jews are going, Well, we can't kill him. They were going, He may be innocent, but we still want to kill him. That saying that Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. When Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of me? And Pilate answered, I am a Jew. Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? He was saying, If I was supposed to stay here, all the angels of heaven would fight for me. But his kingdom was in heaven. But it says, I should not be delivered unto the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that, thy, that I should bear witness unto truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus is saying, the reason I was born, we celebrate Jesus' birth on Christmas. The reason I was born, the reason I came into this world is for this moment in time. But as we continue our story today, I'm going to tell you what Jesus is meaning of that and why it's so important that we celebrate true resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault at all. In other words, I've got a picture here, and it's a picture of Pilate looking at the Jews, and we have Jesus here. He's already been beaten, he's been accused, he's been condemned of doing something wrong, and he's standing here, and Pilate's looking at the Jews, and he's saying, I find no fault in him. I've questioned him, you brought him to my court. However, he says, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore I release unto you the king of the Jews? He's saying, it's Passover time. I find no fault in him. You've beaten him. You've accused him. we whipped him. And so let's just say he's learned his lesson. But you have a custom that we release one person. Why don't you let me release him to meet your custom at Passover? And the Bible says, Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. These people hated Jesus so much, they would rather release a man from prison who was a convicted criminal and a robber than to release an innocent man. In the book of Mark, it states that Barabbas wasn't only a robber, but he was a murderer and he was sentenced to die. They would rather let a murderer go free than Jesus, who was innocent. What do you think Barabbas thought when the guards came to let him go? I could only imagine Barabbas was sitting in jail. He knew he was getting what he deserved. He was chained and locked up. And as he's sitting there, he watches a man who's been beaten within an inch of his life, bound, brought to prison. He walks past him. And he, this man probably has the look of amazing love in his eyes. And as the guards walk this man past Barabbas' cell, some other guards come to Barabbas' cell. And they open up the doors. They said, Barabbas, you can go free. And Barabbas probably looks at those guards and says, what are you talking about? And the guards say, Jesus is going to take your place. You see, Jesus, Barabbas was set free because the people chose him over Jesus. Jesus was an innocent man and he didn't deserve to die. Just like Barabbas, we've all been convicted of sin. Maybe not murder, but sin. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned. I have an example here to illustrate this. We talked about how Barabbas was a sinner and how the people chose 
Barabbas murder someone who had done terrible things over Jesus, who was innocent. Here are my jars I have. Jars is my sin, my best, and Jesus' best. God requires us to be perfect and spotless like Jesus when we enter heaven. Just like this glove I have on my hand, it's white. There's nothing on it. It's perfect and clean. That's what Jesus requires of us, to be perfect and clean like this. But the Bible says that when we sin, sin makes our life dirty. Just like this. When we lie, steal, cheat, disobey, when we dis disrespect our parents, when we do things we shouldn't do, we teach here at Second Baptist Church that sin is anything I think, say, or do that does not please God. It makes our lives dirty and my glove isn't very clean anymore. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. Just like Barabbas, we deserve to die. We can try to clean up our own lives on our own and try to be good. Oh, I'll think I'll be better tomorrow, but it doesn't work. Look what happens when I try my best to clean this up. It actually makes it worse. My glove's dirtier. My best is even dirty. It's a big mess. It, it just makes our lives more messy. Just like Jesus took Barabbas' place on the cross, the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it wasn't evil men who hated Jesus that day that put him on the cross. It was you and me and our sinful, messy lives. Jesus chose to go to the cross and take our place and die for the sins of the whole world. He chose to do this because he loved us so much. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that even though we have sinned and messed up. He still sent Jesus on the cross to die for us. There is not a, there is this thing though. This water is still a mess. And my mess is not good enough. Even though Jesus, God sent Jesus to die on the cross, we, we can't just automatically go to heaven. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have to ask Jesus to come into your life and save you from your sins and to forgive you. And when you do that, he does just that. He takes all our sin and he washes it away and makes us white as snow. He cleanses us and makes us where our lives are white once again. It's pretty amazing that God chose to go to the cross just for us to do that. Not only that, you're asking when you do that, he makes your life white as snow again. When you ask him to forgive your sins, you're asking him to take control of your life and to guide you and direct you. And when he does that, he cleans up your mess. He cleans up your mess completely. Just like Barabbas was set free when he deserved death and to die, you can be released from your sin and set free and know that when you die, you can go to heaven because Jesus has forgiven you of your sins. He will come into your life and save you today. Just like my glove is now clean, my mess and my best is as clean and pure as Jesus best because he is in control. All you have to do is pray and ask Jesus to come into your life and save you, to forgive you of your sins. Just like my jars here and my little chemistry experiment, I did that to represent what happens. When you sin, you've made a dark spot on your life. When you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart and save you, he does that. Just like Jesus best in our jars, turn my glove pure white, that's what happens when we ask Jesus to come in your life and save you. Not only that, when he takes control of your life, he cleans up the whole mess that you've made of your life. And it's amazing how set free you feel and how much joy it can give you. I want you to know that 
you can make that decision at home. But if you'd like to ask for some help, you're welcome to call us here at Second Baptist Church at 580-765-3449. We'd love to know if you made this decision today. We have some material we'd like to get into your hands to help you with this, to make sure that you understand what's going on. Or if you have some more questions and you're just going, Miss Melissa, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not sure and I need to ask you some questions in person. Go ahead and give us a call at that 580-765-3449. We love you and miss you and would love to hear from you guys. Free gift of salvation is the most important thing, decision you can make. You can choose to take that free gift of salvation today. Jesus may have done some really cool and strange things that we've, like we've been talking about on Wednesday nights in Character Kids, but this is the most amazing thing he ever did, and he did it for you and for me. Decision. We love you and miss you, and hope look forward to seeing everyone again soon. Hey kids, look for the link next time next week as we finish telling the real story of easter and resurrection sunday we're going to be cooking up something in the kitchen next time i think it's going to be a really cool example of what happened on resurrection sunday i'm going to give you some ideas of even how you can make it at home and enjoy something special as we celebrate resurrection sunday together see you soon